everyone. Morning. Welcome to our service. Lovely to see you here this morning. Yeah. Thank you so much again to those who've come and uh, helped set up for today. It's uh, half term, uh, so we'll be able to leave things out, which is wonderful, uh, for yeah. one more week. Uh, just a couple of notices to draw to your attention today is our food bank collection day. So if you bought something to the food bank, uh, it's over on the table there. Thank you to those who are taking it down to the food bank every month for us. Uh, second one, I also over on the table there, we've just got a few copies of this book left uh, about Queen Elizabeth, uh, the Queen who chose to serve. Great to take it today because uh, it's kind of uh, this week coming up, isn't it? So do, if you've got any uh, children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, neighbours, you think they'd love a copy of this, they're free, please do take them and give them out to folk uh, as soon as you can. Hopefully also on the table there are some house group notes. Uh, so I've I put them in, in small print in booklet. If you want a digital version or larger print, please do let me know. I can send you that. Uh, that's for house groups that are starting this week or next week. Uh, training in evangelism, covering some really helpful topics in the next five <coughs> weeks of the course that it goes through. Thinking about making meaningful connections with our, our neighbours and the people in the community around us. Loving our neighbours. Answering tough questions with Jesus about our faith. So there's some really helpful uh, material here. Uh, please do make yourself available of those uh, sheets if you want one. And like I say, if you want it in digital form or large print, please do let me know. Well, let's turn to um, our song sheets, which I hope you've taken up as you come in. We're going to begin with a, a couple of songs. Uh, uh, to begin with, a song that acknowledges our dependence upon God. Because as we meet together today... And every day we depend on the Lord our God and we give him glory for the good news of the gospel. We're going to sing to begin with, O great God of highest heaven. Then we'll remain standing as we pray and carry on our worship with my heart is filled with thankfulness. So let's stand as we sing together this morning. pray this morning, Father, that you would have mercy on us according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, that you would blot out our transgressions, 
he would wash away our iniquities and cleanse us from our sin. Father, we pray that you would create in us a pure heart, that you would renew a steadfast spirit within us. Do not cast us from your presence or take your spirit from us, but restore to us even this morning the joy of your salvation and give us willing spirits to sustain and keep and watch over us, we pray, to the honour and glory of your name. Amen. 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 organizations and um, helped many many come to know the Lord Jesus okay next one anyone know who that is, is that Carl Lewis I'm yes on so fire. We, <laughs> she on fire. <laughs> Carl Lewis um, who was one of the far is one of the fastest men on the planet um, he won nine gold medals and he did the 100 meter sprint in 9.8 seconds roughly so, all of those people, well, when the first picture, they looked fairly ordinary. But when we find out what they did, they become important people, special people. And today's story is all about that. So, if we can have the next slide. Today's story is all about Jesus. And Jesus had been travelling and he got to this region of the Gerasenes. And it was a region where people didn't know God very well. They hadn't been following him because they weren't in his family. They weren't Jews. And Jesus arrived by boat. And when he got there, he saw two men who were possessed by demons. They were in a terrible state, as you can see. 
And so when Jesus got there, the demons in the men, well, they recognized Jesus and they screamed at him, have you come, what do you want with the Son of God? Have you come to torture us before the appointed time? Well, Jesus commanded the evil um, demons to come out of the men and he transferred the demons into the pigs. And do you know what happened, Benjamin? Have you heard the story before? The demons were um, put into the pigs by Jesus and they rushed down into the water and they all died. And when the people that lived there found out what happened, they saw the men, they saw the men no longer possessed by the demons. And instead of being happy for the men, they said, oh, our pigs, all of our pigs are dead. What have you done, Jesus? Go away, we don't want you here. Well, the people, they didn't recognize Jesus through what he did. Or if they did recognize who he was, they didn't want him in their lives. But somebody in the story, they did recognize who Jesus was. <coughs> and they recognized his power. It was the demons. And the demons, did you hear in the story, Benjamin, they pleaded to Jesus, what do you want with us? Have you come to destroy us? They knew their time was up. So next slide, please. There's Lotso, Benjamin, from Toy Story. His face there indicates he knows his days are numbered. He knows, doesn't he? When he's been pinned to that truck, that's it. My time is up. And the demons, that's exactly what they knew when Jesus came near to them. They knew their time was up. And Jesus is really the greatest. He's not a hero like Woody who managed to defeat Luxo. No, Jesus is the greatest hero. He's a superhero. He's the one who came with God's power and God's authority. And the men, do you remember the men? Can we have the story again? They were crazed at the beginning with these demons that were possessing them. They had the most terrible life, an awful life, no life at all. Everyone despised them. And when they met with Jesus, Jesus got rid of those demons and they had a new start, a fresh start. Instead of being mad all the time, they lived normal lives from then on. Jesus gave them a new life. <coughs> But the people didn't want to hear, did they? The other people, they did not want to know Jesus. They didn't want to give up their things like the pigs. Uh, Jesus, you come here and, and yeah, okay, these guys are better, but we've lost our livelihoods. Well, I think Jesus was saying something along the lines of, it's better to know me than to have possessions. And this is, I think, is this one of your favorite possessions, Benjamin? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is Charizard. Um, Charizard. And you love him dearly, don't you? Yeah. But what if you were to give him up? <laughs> Would you give him up? No. Definitely not. Don't, that's all right. I'm not going to ask you to do it. Don't worry. But Jesus said, our most valued things, actually, knowing me is better. Later. So what will we do with our choice this morning? Will we cling on to our possessions? Will we say, actually, my job is better than knowing Jesus? My car is better than knowing Jesus? My, my family is better than knowing Jesus? Or will we say, actually, those things are second best? Jesus is the best. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus' power and authority when he came to earth to be with us, to walk amongst us, and to show your great mercy and your great love ultimately through his death on the cross. And we just thank you, Lord. We pray that you would help us to choose Jesus over all of the things in our lives. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Samantha, and Benjamin as well, uh, for your help. We're going to sing again a, a song that has got questions and answers, a, a song that expresses the, the comfort and assurance we have in knowing Jesus Christ as our Saviour and Lord, the one who's died, 
and risen again for us. What is our hope in life and death? It is Christ alone. Let's stand and sing Christ our hope in life. grace and goodness known in our Redeemer's blood. It's a great thing, isn't it, to, to give yourself a talking to every now and again. Mm. And sometimes the words of a hymn like that can really help. So do take that home and remind yourself of that truth. Well, uh, today and for the next uh, four weeks, uh, we're gonna, I'm going to just fiddle with that uh, cable a moment. Hold on a second. There we go. There we go. It comes up in colour as well. It went on. Oh, it went off again. Okay. Okay, someone keep the hand on that. Don't mind. Okay. Just on the little uh, white cable on the floor there. Okay. Let me just sort of wiggle that a little bit. Look at that. Elder's on his knees. That's right. It's great. <laughs> uh, to, so, hopefully these pictures are familiar with you. For the next four weeks, we're going to be thinking about life on our front line. You might have seen these pictures before. Uh, it represents us as Christians. So we're the red dots. And on the one side, on the left there, we are the gathered church. We're the, the little red dots that gather together, just like we do this morning. Here we are, we gather. But throughout the rest of the week, we're scattered. We're all around the place, aren't we? So just look at those individually. We're scattered. We spend most of our lives on our front lines, don't we? In the places where we normally are. That might be a workplace. It might be in your home. It might be with your family or in the community. We are scattered dots, and as Christians, we're to be salt and light in the world. We want to tell others the good news of Jesus. So we, we hopefully have an influence on those around us. So you see some of those different colored dots, they're meant to be slightly orangey, uh, that we actually have an, an influence as salt. 
and light in our workplaces and homes and communities. But then, of course, whether it's on a Sunday or midweek, we then gather again to worship, to be taught from God's word, to encourage one another, to equip and train, and then go back out again. And these dots and these pictures, they, they represent a little bit of the vision of what we're seeking to do as a church in making Jesus known. We're to gather for worship, to encourage and teach and love and support one another. But then we're to go, we're to scatter into those places that are uniquely your front line, my front line, with the people that you come into contact with in a daily basis. We're to go and make disciples. So each Sunday, this week and the next four weeks, we're going to be reminded of life on our front lines with some short little videos, followed by a prayer. Uh, the prayer is both in the notice sheet and I'll have it on the screen uh, this morning. These short little DVDs are about a minute each, but they, they just follow the lives of four characters going on to different front lines, and hopefully you'll be able to identify with one of them. Today we're thinking about all the difference in the world. The fact that each one of us can make all the difference in the world as we go out as a Christian. Over the next few weeks, we'll be thinking about it's wherever we go, whoever we are, whatever we do, we can go out and make Jesus known. And then the last week, we'll be thinking about the gathering again as we do that together. You'll get the idea as we go on through the next few weeks. Here's the, uh, the video. Over a month, around 6% of the UK gather together to worship Jesus. It feels like we're too few to make a difference. But the reality is, Monday to Saturday, God has us. Scattered in the world, connecting to hundreds and thousands of people. So wherever you are. <laughs> Whoever you are. Whatever you do. We strengthen and empower one another to be sent out again for life on our front lines. So the thought for this week is no matter who you are, you can make all the difference in the world, in the place where God has put you uniquely, surrounded by those who are not yet believers. And you might like to think of that this morning as we come to pray. I'm going to pray a prayer that's up on the screen here. It's also in the notices. You can take it away and pray it throughout this week. Let's pray. Thank you, Father God, that we are your church, the body of Christ in the world. We're grateful for our Sunday life and the worship that equips us for the days when we're apart. Help us to see afresh the possibilities of our everyday lives. May we know your presence with us in the pressures and the potential of the week. Help us to leave traces of grace wherever we are and whatever we do. Amen. As we go through these uh, stories in the next few weeks and think about whoever you are and whatever you're doing and wherever you're doing it, after those few weeks it would be really good to hear some stories from your front lines of where God is at work in your life, in what you're doing. So if you'd like to share that in a few weeks' time, please do come and speak with me over the next few weeks. And it would be great to have you just share a, a few moments of what you're doing, where you are, and how God's at work in your life. Well, we're going to continue in our prayers this morning as we come before our Father in heaven and pray. So let us continue in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are the ruler over all, that in the Lord Jesus Christ we come to you as our Father in heaven. Father, thank you for Jesus, who is our good shepherd, who loves us and has given his life for us. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you lead us to green pastures and beside quiet waters, along paths of righteousness for your name's sake. Thank you that you comfort us in the midst of dark valleys 
and fierce storms that we experience. Thank you that you're with us as we go out onto our front line, sent by you to make all the difference in the world. How good it is to know you're leading, you're guiding, you're ruling, and you're protecting hand upon us. Father, we thank you this morning for your word. We thank you that your word is sweet to the taste, it is sweeter than honey to the mouth. How precious are your commands for our lives. They are more than the finest gold in our hands. Father, we know that your will for us is marvellous, that your love for us is unending. And so we pray that our lips would declare your praises. Father, for our church this day, we would pray that each one of us would follow Jesus by the help of your Holy Spirit that we would be active in working with the Lord Jesus to seek and to save the lost. Lord, thank you for those you put us into contact with day by day, week by week. Help us to be salt and light where you have put us. We pray for our children and our young people. We thank you for half term and the chance to rest from the normal activities, but no doubt filled with the busyness of others. For those who are revising, give them wisdom and patience and strength, we pray. For those who are resting on holiday, may they be rested and refreshed to start back again. Pray too for those who are teaching, for those working in schools, that this week would be a good, refreshing break, both physically and emotionally and spiritually, we pray. Father, we pray that as a church we would continue to have the freedom to preach the gospel, both in schools and in our community and in our local area. We pray for one another that we would remain steadfast in our commitment to you, that both individually and together we would follow the lead of Jesus, our Saviour and Lord. So Father, this day we pray, help us to grow in godly character. Help us to be faithful to you and to your word. Help us to be servant-hearted as we seek to love and serve you. May we joyfully follow your lead for our good and for your glory, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, before we come to God's word this morning, we're going to sing again. Now, all I once held dear, built my life upon, all this world reveres and wars to own. All I once thought gain, I've counted loss, spent and worthless now compared to this, compared to knowing Jesus. We've already seen the contrast of that, haven't we, with the children's story, those who didn't want to know him. May we know Jesus and know there is no greater thing. Let's stand as we sing together. <laughs>
seats. And would you turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 8, and Philly's going to bring us our Bible reading this morning. Good morning. Um, this morning's Bible reading is from Matthew chapter 8, which is on page 973 of the Church Blue Bibles. So it's Matthew chapter 8, starting at verse 18 to the end. When Jesus saw the crowd around him, he gave orders to cross to the other side of the lake. Then a teacher of the law came to him and said, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, Foxes of holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Another disciple said to him, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus told him, follow me, and let the dead bury their own dead. <coughs> then he got into the boat, and his disciples followed him. Without warning, a furious storm came up on the lake, so that the waves swept over the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him, saying, Lord, save us, we're going to drown. He replied, you have little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves and it was completely calm. The men were amazed and asked, what kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. When he arrived at the other side in the region of the Gadarenes, Two demon-possessed men, coming from the tombs, met him. They were so violent that no one could pass that way. What do you want with us, son of God? they shouted. Have you come here to talk to us before the appointed time? Some distance from them, a large herd of pigs was feeding. The demons begged Jesus, if you drive us out, send us into the herd of pigs. He said to them, go. So they came out and went into the pigs, and the whole herd rushed down a steep bank into the lake and died in the water. Those tending the pigs ran off and went into the town and reported all this, <coughs> including what had happened to the demon-possessed men. Then the whole town went out to meet Jesus. And when they saw him, they pleaded with him, to leave their region. Thank you so much, Philly. Well, please do keep your Bibles open there at Matthew chapter 8 as we come to look at God's Word. Well, last Sunday we considered uh, the beginning of Matthew 8, didn't we? And those three people who encountered the Lord Jesus. After teaching with great authority on the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus comes down and shows his authority. It's one thing to hear it from him, it's another thing to see it right in front of him. And he comes down and he heals these three people. We thought about how Jesus comes for the unclean, how Jesus comes for the undeserving, how Jesus comes for the unnoticed. The man with leprosy, the centurion and his servant, and then Peter's mother in and we're focusing in this series on the person and work of Jesus so that we might draw near to him, so that we might grow in faith and love for him as we seek to go out and serve him and make him known. Makes sense, doesn't it? If we draw near to Jesus and understand more of who he is and what he's like, that will equip and train us and help us to go out to seek to love and serve him and make him known. Well, this week in Matthew 8, we've got three further accounts that Matthew records for us. And they're all about following Jesus. Having heard his authority in the Sermon on the Mount, having seen his authority in these healing miracles, are you willing to follow Jesus? So the first little episode is about two people who ask about following him. They seem to be quite keen, but they need to learn the, about the cost of following Jesus. Uh, the second little story is about 12 people in a boat who are following Jesus, but they need to learn about having faith in him 
as they do follow him. And then the third account is a whole town load of people who are so fearful of Jesus that they don't want to follow him and ask him to go away. It's all about following Jesus. So let's think, first of all, then, in verses 18 to 22, about the cost of following Jesus. Because there is a cost in following him. He comes across these two men who express a desire to, to join the inner circle of the disciples. So we read in verse 18 of the first one, when Jesus saw the crowd around him and gave orders to the, uh, cross to the other side of the lake, a teacher of the law came to him and said, Teacher, I'll follow you wherever you go. First one starts really positively. That's a great response, isn't it? Oh, fantastic. He's just preached. He's just done these things. And I'll follow you wherever you go. But as we'll see, he's going to get put off from doing so. The second says, he just makes a statement. Lord, first let me go and bury my father. And he's rebuked and told to follow Jesus. But the basic point of the two encounters is simple enough. It's all about the cost of following Jesus. The first is perhaps too quick in making his promises and he's not counted the cost. The second is too slow in his understanding. He's not thought about the cost of what he's got to do. Look at the first one again. Verse 19. The teacher of the law comes to him and says, teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. Now that's quite a remarkable thing, isn't it? A teacher of the law is coming before Jesus and saying, Jesus, you are my 